Resin water dioramas can look amazing if you get them right, but they're not the easiest of projects to do. Let me show you a simple, beautiful little resin project that you can do to get the experience and the skills you need to succeed with these projects in the future. Hi everyone, my name is Jean and I'm the Curious Crafter Guy. So you've seen all these amazing resin diorama projects online and you've been wanting to do one yourself. I've been wanting to do a resin project for a long time. There's just something about the resin that adds an element of depth and, and realism to this project that make them stand out. The problem is uh, that if you haven't worked with these materials before, uh, mistakes can be made and it can be costly. The materials are not the cheapest. And once the resin sets, you not only lose the materials that you used, but also the time you spent on creating this um, diorama. In this project, I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step guide of what I think is the ideal first project to help you to avoid these kind of mistakes. It will take you from a beginner and give you the skills you need to approach a larger, more complex project like this in the future. This is a shark and resin tutorial. My first tip that I highly, highly recommend is that you think your project through from the beginning to the end. Think about the materials, the tools, the processes. If you do this thoroughly, you're going to avoid a lot of mistakes. So here's the plan for this project. I wanted to make a mini diorama that kind of looks like this. It's a shark swimming through shallow water. I wanted to make something that's kind of the size of my phone. It's not too big so it won't use too much resin but it's also just big enough that I can still work with it easily and um, create the little shark figurine. We need to start with a solid base because this is our foundation. A piece of off-cut wood plank would be perfect for this. You can go to your local hardware store or to a wood workshop. They usually have a bin of pieces of off-cut wood that you can get for free. Next you need to create the seafloor shape. I would like this to look like uh, shallow water and for this I decided to use air drying clay. On top of that I can add a thin layer of sand. For the sea creature I wanted to make a shark. I decided actually to make the shark myself. I want to use polymer clay. Polymer clay is a little bit easier to work with in your hands to get little figurines like this and then you can oven harden it and also paint it easily afterwards. We need some kind of a dam to keep all the resin in. I wanted to create a nice surface finish and that it would be easy to remove in the end and not too expensive. Lastly, we need to have resin. I want this to have a light blue tint to be clear. I want as little bubbles in it as possible. I'm not too worried about getting a wavy surface or anything but that's something that I would explore in a future project. So question for you, what is your ideal or your dream project that you would like to do right now? If you had the, the tools, the skills and the materials you needed, what would you do right now? My next step is that you should prepare. You should prepare your tools, the materials and the environment for doing your craft. Let's look at the materials that you will need for this project. You will need some pieces of off-cut wooden planks, some air drying clay, some glue, paint, polymer clay, resin, ink, hot glue, silicone sealant, and stiff plastic for the dam. Here are some of the tools you need. Disposable mixing glasses, stir sticks, paint brushes, utility knife, and a heat gun or a hair dryer. Here's the wooden piece I decided to go with. Don't worry at all if there are any surface roughness or imperfections on the top surface. Imperfections actually add to the bonding between the clay and the wooden plank. I added some water to the surface and then pressed the air drying clay into it. The focus here was just to get a really good bond between these two layers. I don't want them to separate. Once the clay is properly adhered to the wood, but still wet, you can remove any excess by just cutting off the sides uh, with a utility knife. I then pinch the clay together to form the sand ripples just keep a bottle of water nearby that you can pour over clay just to keep it wet and malleable throughout the process. Moving the clay around can cause some excess again that needs to be cut off with the utility knife later. My next step is to keep your environment clean. In this project you're going to work with many different kinds of materials. All of this creates little particles of dust that can end up in your resin. So it's really important that you keep your environment clean. A simple thing such as a wet cloth would help a lot in this. Keep your environment clean and the particles won't end 
end up in your resin in the end. I think the best way is to actually let the air drying clay dry up properly over a day or two. But uh, if you're in a hurry, you can also use a heat gun or hair dryer to speed up the process a little bit. When it's dry, you can add a thin layer of PVA glue and sprinkle the surface with sand until it covers all areas. I prefer a white colored sand to make it look like beach sand and I wanted this to be as fine as possible so that it does not spoil the scaling effect. Let this dry out overnight and then repeat the process. After it dried out, I would brush the surface with a clean, large, soft brush. I really did this thoroughly because I didn't want any of these particles to end up floating in the resin and spoil the project. My next step is to challenge you to try something new. So in my case this was creating the little shark figurine. I, I've never done a clay modeling like this before or I find a shark kind of difficult to do. I could have bought one and then just painted it. You'll see that in many other videos that people buy a shark figurine and then they just paint over it. But I decided I wanted to make it out of clay because I wanted to learn the skills to do this. So my approach was that I wanted the shark to stand out in the blue water. What I decided to do in the end was to mix this light brown color using polymer clay. I would highly recommend that you create a little bit excess first time you mix this base layer because you don't want to end up with too little when you add the fins and then you have to mix it again and you can't get the, the colors to, to match exactly. I rolled in a cylinder, measured it against the base, cut off uh, what I didn't need that I would use to create the little fins later on and then I started shaping the body of the shark. I looked up some side profiles of sharks online and I drew this on a little piece of paper that I used as a guide for helping me to shape the base of the shark and then the fins. I think this would have been easier if I had those little silicone sculpting tools. I don't have a set yet so I just used some tools that I had lying around and you can absolutely do that but it's a little bit easier if you have the exact right tool. I'm gonna get those tools in the future. Now at this point I'm trying something that I don't have have much experience with. I was not sure at all if this would come out good enough or if I would have to go find a shark replacement toy or something in a store soon. When I feel out of depth in doing any of these craft things, I usually just slow things down. Now that's my next step. If you ever in a position where you're doing something that's really difficult, try to slow it down. Just stop for a second, think about what you're doing, think about the next steps and slowly proceed forward. Now sometimes it's really difficult. If you, for example, just poured some resin, it's difficult to slow down the process because it's a chemical reaction. But if for something like sculpting, you can slow it down, you can compare against the shape that you have, you can look at photos online. After a while, more and more, the model started to take its final shape. To be honest, I was just relieved to see shock that wasn't too weird looking. It's not the easy route, I would say, but it's definitely the most rewarding. And now I at least have a little bit of a skill in this area that I can use in my future projects. Now while your shark is baking in the oven, you can start with um, sealing your base in a thin layer of resin. Bubbles originate in the sand or on a rough surface and they travel up in the resin and as the resin settles or hardens, they get locked into place. So it looks like a little jacuzzi <laughs> and totally unrealistic. You can't even see the things inside. So I did quite a bit of research on how to reduce bubbles in resin and I'm going to summarize it for you here so that you won't have to do this yourself. Now I'm going to break this list in the order of highest benefit to the lowest benefit out of experience and from what I've seen online. The most benefit that you can get for these kind of projects to reduce bubbles is to seal the base like I said. The second one is to get a pressure vessel. A pressure vessel creates a high pressure around the craft while it's curing. The high pressure reduces the size of the bubbles to a point where you can't even see them. And don't go the opposite route of getting a vacuum machine. That would actually draw out more air, create larger bubbles and it also sometimes creates a big mess from what I've seen. The third thing is to buy a resin that is bubble friendly. Some resins allow bubbles to release easily and some don't. You can also cast in layers. If you cast in thin layers, it helps the bubbles to easily reach the surface where you can pop them with heat gun but you just have to be careful because sometimes you can see the layers and that's also not the, the best thing. The last thing I can say is that if you stir really carefully and you pour really carefully, you can also reduce the bubbles. If you see a bubble in the resin, don't try to stir it in. It just creates a thousand tiny little bubbles uh, that you don't want. Once the shock is finished baking in the oven, you can take it out, let it cool down a bit, and then you could finish it off with acrylic paint. 
I wanted to do either spots or lines on the sides with a light brown color to give it marks like a tiger shock and then some white on the bottom. In the end I decided to go with the spots. To create the dam there are two well-known methods. The first method is where you use a tape to create the dam and this is typically used by guys like Luke Towen for these large dioramas where they pour resin in thin layers one by one. The benefit of the tape is that it's really cheap, it releases easily. The downside is that you have to pour in thin layers. You can't let the resin heat up too much and you also have to be really careful that you don't have any leaks. The tape can warp, the glue can come off and and you can have a massive dam break. The second method that I've seen online that's pretty popular is some guys like uh, Jed Rec 29, something like that. He uses a thin layer of acrylic sheets. And the great thing about these are that they are very smooth. So they create a very nice surface finish. They are slightly stiffer, so they don't bend as easily with uh, deep pores, but they're a little bit harder to remove in the end. You'll have to break them off. The other thing is that they are a little bit more expensive and I guess they're not ideal for a very long in my case, I couldn't get these thin acrylic sheets, which is what I would have liked to do. So what I decided to do was to use some thin plastic sheets from old uh, toy boxes that I then cut into thin strips, perfectly matched them together to have a nice seal on the corners. And then I stiffened these with some corrugated plastic to uh, make sure they don't warp when the resin heats up. I also used a little bit of Vaseline in the insides to make sure that it releases properly in the end. I wanted to make the shark thin stick out of the top surface so I tried to let it hang from a popsicle stick using some hot glue but in the end this didn't work really well that resin heated up and then this was the hot glue to release the shark which didn't just drop to the bottom but it wasn't too bad in the end it worked out really well I decided to do one deep pour because I wanted to avoid seeing any layers between the resin in earlier experiments Removing the dam was quite difficult in this project. I didn't add enough of the release agent and I also allowed the model to get too hot during the settling period. I used the heat gun to soften the plastic and then I peeled it off using some tongs. Uh, the resin always makes a sharp edge at the top surface which is usually quite easy to get rid of you just cut it off with a utility knife i then proceeded to sand and polish the sides i think in hindsight it would have been much easier to just paint the sides with a little bit of resin but i wanted to try the sanding and polishing i thought it was going to be much easier but it's actually a quite tedious process I tried various methods. I even used my Dremel, which works well, but it's just a bit messy. You get all this uh, polish over your face in the process. <laughs> um, but through this process, the lesson I learned was that you should avoid any surface <laughs> finishing afterwards if you can at all. Rather use a, a good damming material that creates a really smooth surface or paint some resin over this in the end to get this crystal clear sides. I decided to finish off the base with a layer of sand on the sides to make it look like a cutout of sand essentially. The result was uh, a great little piece. The water and the sand looks amazing and it makes me want to just dive in. I think that I can improve on the shark a bit in the future. There is still quite a bit of bubbles but not too much to spoil the project. I can try to reduce this in future by using methods I described earlier. I didn't mind too much that the shark dropped to the bottom. The fin was still sticking at the top. In future I would maybe add some surface ripples using some of the products that you can find online and then create maybe a little bit of white water around the shark fin. Now if you enjoyed this video I would highly recommend that you check out my stingrays in similar resin or the empty ocean one which has a lot of extra tips so check those out if you find this video really helpful.